Okay, good evening everyone and welcome back to our options education webinar series. My name is Tony Zhang. I'm the chief strategist here at Options Play and I want to welcome everyone back from the holidays. I hope you guys had a safe and happy holiday and a good start to the new year. I'm really excited to continue our options education series and today we have a topic that I think is fairly timely given the current market environment that we're in which is in a very low interest rate environment where income is difficult to come by so today what we want to explore is how you can generate income in your portfolio utilizing options and today i'm going to actually cover three different ways that you can generate income in your portfolio utilizing options and it's more of an introductory to the different uh, types of strategies that you can initiate to generate income. If you want to learn more about it, two of the strategies I've actually already recorded a webinar last year or the, in December on how to implement them. The third one, which is a little bit more advanced, is going to be coming up in the next couple of months. So today is more of an introduction and giving you an idea as far as what are all the different ways you can generate income utilizing options. And if you want to learn more, we have different resources to help you dive into each specific strategy. I'll show you some of the tools and resources we have in place with the partnership that we have with NASDAQ that helps you um, implement the strategies that we're gonna show you here today. And lastly, keep in mind that for those of you that have a little bit more experience, if you're interested in trading some of the more advanced strategies, some of that education is coming down the line. Uh, so this is meant to open your eyes as far as what are the different ways to generate income and then introduce you to these spe specific strategies and some of the details around each one so that you can learn more about it. Now, the three strategies I'm gonna cover here today are cover calls, cash secured puts, and credit spreads. Now, the reason I'm covering these three strategies is because the goal here is to provide you with a uh, with an opportunity to generate income on your portfolio, regardless of what your portfolio looks like. Whether you have a stock portfolio that you already own stocks and ETFs in and you want to generate some income, or maybe you want to buy some stocks in your portfolio, how to generate income doing that. Or, you know, for some of you, perhaps you have no interest in owning stocks. You just want to speculate and try to generate some income in, in that particular fashion. So regardless of what your goals are, what type of portfolio you have, what risk tolerance you have. What I'm hoping to show you guys is that there are different option strategies suitable for different forms of trading, but they all can provide you with opportunities to generate income. So before I get started, just a quick disclaimer, what I'm gonna discuss here today is purely for educational purposes. It is not a solicitation or recommendation to buy or sell any specific securities. Now, um, for those of you that are brand new to Options Play, welcome. Uh, if you do not already have access to Options Play, which is the tool that I'll show you here today, you can sign up using this link here at the bottom, optionsplay.se, which I just posted the link for everyone in the chat window. This will give you access to the platform free of charge, bi-weekly options education webinars, just like the one you're on here today. And most importantly for what we're here to discuss today, is the weekly cover call and short put reports. This is something that will be very helpful in giving you a better understanding as to how to go about utilizing the tools that we have here to help you generate income because we send these weekly reports to you to give you an idea as far as which stocks give you the best opportunity to, gener to, to generate the maximum income or maximum yield in your portfolios by looking at that report. So if you are used to generating income or you're interested in generating income, I highly recommend you to sign up so that at the very least you have access to those reports. Now, today what I'm going to cover is three different things. Uh, the three top three income strategies, which I've already said was cover calls, cash secure puts, and credit spreads. Um, before I get started, I just wanna get a sense for the audience here in this room. Um, if you've only sold cover calls in your portfolio, please type one into the chat window. If you sold cover calls and cash secured puts, please type one and two into the chat window. 
If you've sold cover calls, cash secured puts, and credit spreads, please type one, two, and three into the chat window. Um, just so I can get a sense for the audience here in the room. And you can bring up your chat window at the bottom of your screen. Uh, you should have a link that allows you to uh, um, uh, uh, bring up a chat window and just type in the number of strategies that you've traded. One is cover call, two is cash secured puts, three is credit spreads. If you've traded all three, just enter one, two, and three. I just want to get a sense for the audience here in the room and how much experience uh, the audience here has. Um, once I introduce the strategies, then I will discuss what are the optimal expiration dates and strike price selections for each individual strategy because they are quite different. Um, and actually, Olivia, thank you so much. If you have not traded any of these strategies, just type zero. Um, if you've never traded any of these strategies I discussed, please type zero. Okay, so I see a lot of zeros. Looks like the majority of you guys have not traded any of these strategies. A few of you have traded cover calls and cash secured puts. Looks like one of you have traded all three, um, but most of you are brand new, which is great, okay? So today is an introduction, uh, introduction and I think what I want you to hopefully walk away from here today is just understanding the power and of options and all the different variations of how you can utilize options to generate income in your portfolio. Um, this webinar itself may is likely not going to be enough education for you to learn to uh, enough to start trading these strategies, but hopefully this inspires you to learn more about those individual strategies and I'll point you to where you can learn more. Then we'll talk a little bit about how to generate consistent income in your portfolio. Uh, meaning what steps do you do you need to take in order to automate this process and make it so that you can generate an actual income stream? Because if you just generate income in, in a single month, that in my opinion is not really generating income. Generating income needs to be something that you can repeat month after month and generate a stream of income for in order for us to consider this an income generating strategy. So we want to talk about how you can repeat this month after month and generate an income stream off of your portfolio. And lastly, we'll talk a little bit about exit strategies, but I will say, given the fact that most of you have never traded any of these strategies, I do think that exit strategies is probably something we can skip for today. Let's focus more of our time on just understanding the strategies themselves and how to get into it and how to learn more because the exit strategies will be something that you want to um, learn more about once you have a base and fundamental understanding of the strategy themselves. And then lastly, what we'll do is we'll end with looking at options play and showing you how to utilize these tools in order to, um, to generate income utilizing options play. So the three strategies I'm going to talk about here are cover calls, cash secured puts, and credit spreads. And given the fact that most of you answer that you're relatively new to this, these strategies or that you've never traded these strategies, what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus my attention today predominantly on selling cover calls and selling cash secured puts. I'll spend a few minutes talking about credit spreads for those of you that are a bit more advanced. Um, but like I said, I am going to do a whole webinar just on credit spreads in a few weeks. So we'll, we'll definitely cover that on that, uh, um, on, on that webinar. But today let's focus on cover calls and cash secured puts because this is what you're likely going to be trading for the most of you that have never traded any of these strategies. So the two strategies, cover calls and cash secured puts, these are both strategies related to your stock portfolio. So for all of you that answered zero, meaning you've never traded any of these three strategies, how many of you own some stocks in your portfolio? Please type yes if you own some stocks in your portfolio, and please type no if you do not own any stocks in your portfolio. Okay, so most of you have answered yes, a couple of you have answered no, okay? So for those of you that answered yes, uh, cover calls is the first strategy that you want to learn more about because it is something that you can do today as long as you have an options account with your broker. If you own some stocks in your portfolio, 
you can sell call options against that stock portfolio in order to generate an income stream. So what, when you sell a cover call, what you're doing is you're basically placing a limit order to effectively sell your stock at a higher price sometime in the future. If the stock rises to that price in the future, you sell your stock, but in order to sell a cover call, you're going to get some income for doing so. And for those of you that answered no, meaning you don't own any stocks in your portfolio, a cash secured put is a great way to generate some income while trying to purchase some stocks for your portfolio. So cash secured puts are for stocks that you want to own. Cover calls are for stocks that you already own. And these are both scenarios that as an equity investor, you'll find yourself in because sometimes you want to buy some stocks. Sometimes you want to sell some stocks. And in both scenarios, you can generate income. Um, as an equity investor, many times when you want to buy a stock, you might just place a limit order or a market order. Uh, but that limit order or market order doesn't pay you any income. Same thing, if you already own a stock and you want to sell it off, um, you can place a limit order or a market order to sell your stock, but that order does not pay you any income. Options allow you to effectively do the same thing but get some yield to do so. And I wanna give you some examples in a few minutes to show you some, some real examples of some real stocks and show you exactly how much income you're actually going to receive from these two strategies. So today we're gonna to focus, in my opinion, on these two. And lastly, for those of you that are, you know, I think there was one of you that, or two of you that have said that you've sold cover calls and cash secured puts, and one of you said that you've sold credit spreads. Credit spreads is a more advanced strategy but it's actually not too different from selling a cash secured put. Um, it, it's a more advanced version of a cash secured put, but allows you to generate income on stocks that you have a bullish, bearish, or perhaps even a neutral outlook on to be able to generate income based on your views of that underlying stock. So I will come back to this credit spread section here in one second, but before I move on, I just wanna make sure that everyone understands the opportunity here as to selling cash secure puts for stocks that you want to own and then uh, selling cover calls on stocks that you already own. Um, I just want to make sure everyone understands that concept before we move on. I'll discuss the strategies themselves in a little bit more detail, but I want to make sure everyone understands that, that selling cover calls are for stocks that you already own and selling cash secured puts are for stocks that you want to own. If you understand that or if you follow that, please type one into the chat window. Okay, perfect. I see a lot of ones. So I think that before we start discussing, you know, the details of cover calls, cash secured puts, I just want to go through a couple of examples um, because I think that helps solidify exactly what we're doing here. So let's pull up a stock like, um, uh, who has a stock that they want to take a look at? Preferably a big name stock. Um, you know, let's look at H&M because I think H&M is a stock that almost everyone is familiar with. Uh, it's trading at about 192 crowns. Many of you probably own this stock. Some of you maybe want to purchase this stock. So let's take a look at um, H&M as an example, okay? Now, the, tool, uh, the options play tool is free of charge to everyone to sign up for using the link that I just showed everyone at the beginning of the webinar. I'll come back to it at the very end. But what I want to do is I want to show you some examples here. So the tool itself is divided into three sections. You have trade ideas and watch lists here on the left-hand side. Currently, what I'm looking at is the watch list section. We've built a lot of watch lists already for you. I'm looking at the Swedish derivatives ones right now because uh, the Swedish derivatives market is the largest one. So we wanted to show you uh, how you can um, or, or you can see all the available options that you can trade in the Swedish markets. I picked H&M, obviously one of the larger stocks in Sweden. The middle panel is our security analysis panel. This gives you a sense for where the stock is currently trading. So we have a one month and six month trend to give you a sense for the directional view of that stock. We have a technical score, which gives you a sense for how strong the stock is compared to the rest of the market. So a score of seven is telling me that this is relatively strong. It's relatively outperforming 70% of the stocks in the market. And important information, such as when is the next earnings date, 
uh, how much dividends does this, does this uh, particular stock pay, and uh, current price action of this individual stock. And you'll see here on the right-hand side, we have trading and income. Now, many of you that have ever looked at options, you're probably familiar with a page that looks like this. So for those of you that trade H&M, you're probably familiar with a page that looks something like this, where you have a listing of every single expiration date and strike price, and you have to choose from this type of page what you want to trade, what expiration date, what strike price. What we decided at Options Play was that that is not a good user experience to have to go through pages and pages of hundreds of strikes to try to pick where you want to start. Instead, what we do is we ask you, what are you looking for? And then return back to you what starting points make sense. So the first thing you have to ask yourself is, are you interested in trading H&M or are you interested in generating in income from H&M? Because today our topic is focused on income, I'm going to look at the income tab today. We're not going to look at trading because trading is for speculating. So today we're here to generate income. And what you'll see here, when you click on the income tab, it'll ask you two questions. Number one, it'll ask you, do you own shares of H&M? You can either select yes. So this is the cover call piece we talked about before. If you own the stock, you want to sell a cover call. If you don't own the stock, that's when you want to sell a cash secured put. Okay, so that's what these two toggles are meant for. And what I want to do is I want to show you what type of income can you actually receive if you own H&M stock and what kind of income can you receive if you want to purchase H&M stock. So let's start with the purchase, right? Because everyone needs to buy the stock before they can start selling cover calls. So let's, start, let's take a look at buying this stock. So here, H&M is currently trading at 192. So if you were interested in buying the stock, as an equity investor myself, I would typically place an order somewhere below the current price to hopefully buy the stock at a lower price. You could place a limit, uh, I'm sorry, a market order and buy it at the current price, but I think for most people, they would typically place a limit order somewhere below the current price. Now, by default, this is telling me to sell a March 20th, 180 put. What this does is it tells me that by March 20th, I have the opportunity to buy H&M stock at 180 crowns per, per share. Now, this is based on best practices for selecting an automatic expiration date and strike price. And we're going to discuss in a few mo moments what are, what are reasonable starting points. And you can always modify this to change the expiration date as far as when do you want to purchase this stock and what um, strike price or what price do you want to own this stock um, at. So you can modify these however you'd like. However, what we do is we provide you with starting points. And as you can see here, if I place the limit order to buy the stock at 180 crowns, then I would have to put 18,000 uh, crowns to purchase 100 shares. But when I sell a put option, I don't have to put up 18,000 crowns to buy the stock at 180 crowns. I only have to put up 17,540. And why do I have to put up less money? The reason is because I'm receiving 460 crowns to sell this put option. So that is the income that you're actually going to receive to purchase this stock. If you just place a limit order, you're not getting paid anything. With the cash secured put here, I'm getting paid 460 crowns over the next 72 days. And what you have to think about this is in terms of yield. What do I mean by that? If you look at the, the um, dividend yield on H&M, right? If you own H&M, you're getting paid 9.7 crowns per share throughout the whole year. You got it paid semi-annually 4.85 crowns every half a year. Um, which comes out to be around a 5% yield for the whole year. So if you're getting paid 9.7 crowns for one year on H&M stock, if you owned it, here I'm paying you 4.6 crowns over the next 72 days. And what does that equal to? That equals to 2.39% of the underlying stock price in just 72 days. If I was able to sell puts throughout the whole year, that annualized yield is about 12%. So as you can see here, if you own H&M stock, you're getting paid a little over 5%, but the yield on this cash secured put 
is over 12%. So this is really where the first step in starting to generate yield in your portfolio starts, is selling cash secured puts on stocks that you want to purchase because by selling a cash secured put, you, get, you collect income, that income offsets the cost to actually own that stock, and, that, and the income you receive many times is, so is double what you will receive on the dividend yield. Here, you own about 5% of your own H&M stock. Here, you're getting 12% yield on your cash. That's the first step in starting to generate yield. And, you know, this is, I, I think, again, this is more of an introduction to the strategy itself. I'm not going to spend too much time on selecting expiration dates and strike prices just yet. I'll come back to that. But I just wanted to show you an example and give you some real numbers to think about as far as how much yield can you actually receive from, from selling a put option instead of just placing a limit order to buy the stock at 180 crowns. Selling that 180 put, what does that receive? In this particular case, 460 crowns over the next 72 days, which is more than double what you're receiving in terms of dividend yield on this particular stock. So let's say you sell a cash secured put or even if you just place the limit order to buy the stock, let's say you now own this stock. Now let's take a look at a cover call. Here, I'm selling the March 215 cover call. So a cover call that is roughly about uh, uh, 22 dollars, so 22 crowns above the current price of the stock. And what for this particular cover call, which gives me the opportunity to sell the stock at 215. So if by March, the stock rallies up to 215, um, let's draw an arrow here. So if, let's say by March, this stock rallies up to around there or so, um, 215, right? Um, if the stock rallies up to about 215, which is right there by March, then what this does is it tells, by selling a cover call, I'm obligated to sell the stock at 215. Now, in my opinion, that's, that's basically like placing an order and saying in the future, if this stock rallies significantly higher, I'd like to sell the stock at a profit. And normally if you place a limit order at 215, you're not gonna get paid any income. And if the stock rallies up to 215, you sell your stock at 215 and you've made a profit on this particular stock. But when you sell a cover call, you have the same obligation to sell your stock at 215, but by selling a cover call instead of placing a limit order, what happens? You receive 180 crowns in income. Now, you receive 180 crowns in 72 days, which annualizes out to about 4.74%. Because you're receiving 0.94% in 72 days, if you do this throughout the whole year, that comes out to be roughly 4.74%. So, as you can see here on the put side, you're always going to receive more income than on the call side. And this is, this is due to uh, things that I'm not going to spend too much time to get into, but markets always put a higher premium on downside than upside because markets, generally speaking, when they move um, down, they tend to move down more violently. They tend to move faster when, when there's bad news that comes out than good news. Good news tends to be more of a slower grind. Um, you know, as you can see here, if we look at these moves, uh, as you can see here, these moves, these up moves tend to be fairly slow. They're not, they're not quick and fast moves. But if you look at the downside, they tend to be very, they tend to be much shorter and much more violent. So that's why put options usually trade at a higher premium than call options. So whenever you're selling options, you're going to generally generate more yield or more income by selling puts than you are going to generate yield from selling cover calls. Um, and also how far away from the current price you're selling also matters. So the puts here that we're selling are only about 10, 12 crowns away from the current price. The calls that we're selling are 22 crowns away from the current price. So whenever we're selling cover calls, we're going to naturally select a higher price and we're going to collect less income for it. And I'm going to come back to that in one second, but I want to show you roughly how much premium can you really realistically expect. So if you own 100 shares of H&M, you can roughly collect 180 crowns every 72 days. Okay. So I just wanted to show you guys some numeric examples so that you can get some numbers in your head. So 
now that I've shown you this, I want to go back to the, to the slides and go and, and teach you a little bit more about these strategies. But before I move, before I go back to the slides, I just want to make sure everyone understands selling a cash secured put, uh, you know, what I mean by buying the stock at a lower price. And when I'm selling, it's telling you about cover calls, what I mean by selling this stock at a higher price. If that makes sense to you, please type two into the chat window. Okay, perfect. Lots of twos. Great. So let's go back to the slides. So now let's talk a little bit about, you know, now that we've talked about, we know that when you sell a cash secured put that allows you to buy the stock at a lower price and generate some income to do so, selling a cover call allows you to sell the stocks that you own at a higher price and generate some income to do so. Now let's talk a little bit about how do we go about selecting what expiration date and what strike price should we choose for our cover calls, our cash secured puts, and I'll talk a little bit about credit spreads as well. So this really comes down to the decay curve of an option. So the, the, the decay curve of an option refers to this black line here. And what this means is that the option, the value of an option that you purchase or, or sell actually decays as it approaches expiration. So you can, as you can see here, when you look at an options uh, um, page like this one, you see that there's lots of different expirations you can choose. You can choose January, February, March, um, June, September, December, and it goes all the way out. Sometimes many, it goes out multiple years. So in H&M, it goes all the way out to December 2021. That's almost two years away from today. Now, what you're going to notice is that the further out you go in time, the more expensive the options are, and as close to the current price of the uh, um, the ones that are very close to expiration are the are the cheapest in value. And that curve, in terms of how expensive or how cheap something is, looks like this. So the further out you go in time, it gets more and more expensive, but the more expensive it goes, it doesn't go up in a, in a straight line, it goes up in a curve. So you have to understand that it's a curve to help you understand where should you sell options. And the thing is that whenever we're selling, we're talking about income, so selling a cover call, selling a cash secured puts, or even credit spreads, is that we're selling. So when we sell, what do we want? When we sell, we want the value of the option to go to zero. Right? Because when you sell something, you want it to go down. When you're buying something, you want it to go up. Right? So when we're selling, we want something to actually decay. Ideally, we want it to decay to zero because if we sell something for a dollar and it goes to zero, then we keep that whole dollar, or I'm sorry, one crown or a hundred crowns. Right? So if we sell something for five crowns, what we want is we want it to go to zero because if it goes to zero, then we keep all five crowns. So, when we're selling any type of options, generally speaking, we want to sell things that are on this end of the curve because what it means is that it decays faster. The faster it decays, the faster we're going to make our income. If we sell something all the way out here, as you can see, that decay happens much more slowly. So for me to make the same amount of, um, of so, and I think the best way to draw this is like this. Um, let me find a better way to draw this. So as you can see here, the movement that I have from here to here is, prob is roughly the same as here to here. But as you can see here, the, the time it takes me to make that same amount when I go further out in time is significantly longer than if I sell shorter dated options. So this is why whenever we're selling options, we generally want to sell shorter dated options because shorter dated options will decay faster, which allows us to generate income faster. And I wanna make sure everyone understands that before we move on. So if you understand why I suggest that whenever we're selling options, we wanna sell shorter dated options, so one month options, maybe two month options, it's because those options will decay at a faster rate than if we sell longer dated options like four or five months out. Even though the four to five months out give you more income, but 
the rate at which you earn that income is going to be slower and you don't want that. So I wanna make sure everyone understands that. Please type three into the chat window before we move on. Okay, perfect. And the one thing I will add though, is that in theory, it's best to sell options that expire a week from auction, from expiration, right? Because the, the, the decay here in the last week is even faster than the decay up here. However, there is diminishing returns as far as how close you can get. And the reason for this is because on one week away, the premiums sometimes are so low. So the amount that you are receiving here one week out, even though it's, it's really the fastest, is so low that the commissions that you pay on the trade may not even offset the, the premium that you receive. So there is some limitation as far as how low you really want to go. Um, we generally find that that minimum is usually about one, one and a half months away. So we tend to find that the sweet spot is usually somewhere in kind of this range. Because if you go too low, the premiums are so low that you're not even going to offset. So in, in this particular range, right? Yes, you're going to get the highest rate of, uh, of, of um, income, but the premiums are so low, you might not even be able to uh, you know, overcome that with the commission. So I want to make sure everyone understands that there is some threshold that's the minimum, and that minimum we tend to find is usually about one, one and a half months out is the, is the lowest or the smallest um, time frame that you usually want to sell options for. So if that makes sense, everyone, please type four into the chat window. Okay, perfect. So I know I spent a lot of time on that one slide, but I do think it's very, very important that everyone understands that when you're selling options, why it's so important to try to choose expirations that are, that are relatively close to expiration because you're gonna get that faster time decay, but there's also that, that bottom, if you will. You don't wanna go too short because then you're not even gonna overcome commissions. So, how do you generate consistent how do you generate consistent income in your portfolio how do you how do you uh, manage to make sure that month after month you're going to generate an income stream on your portfolio and the answer is that you want to select expiration dates and strike prices based on best practices which is what i just showed you why expiration dates when you're selling options you want to choose shorter dated options and use the same methodical approach every single cycle what that means is that if you're gonna select a one and a half month option this month, once that option expires, the next time you sell another cover call, you should also select another one and a half month option. What I tend to see sometimes people do is that they pull up an option chain and one month they'll choose a one month option, the next month they'll choose a two month option because they see the two month option maybe gets another couple of crowns and they're thinking, oh, you know, I want, I want a few extra crowns this month, maybe, I have an event coming up and I can use some extra income. So they select a different expiration date or a different strike price. And that's where you get inconsistent income. If you want to generate consistent income, you must use the same methodical approach every single cycle. And this is part of what Options Play is designed to do because automation that we provide helps you generate consistency. Because if you use Options Play every single time you want to select a cover call or a cash secured put, all you have to do is type in the symbol. And what we do is we will actually do the work to help you find the right strategy to trade. So if you type in a symbol uh, like SAND, we'll provide you an expiration date and strike price that follows these best practices. And you can even customize these settings by choosing short, medium, or long-term options, conservative, optimal, or aggressive, which I will get into a little bit. Um, but this is really designed to help you find consistency in your trading and also provides you the ability to customize these strategies for yourself. So automation really helps facilitate the consistency that you need to generate an income stream off of these types of strategies. So I get a questions a lot about how do you actually do this. So let's break down the strategies themselves a little. Whenever we're selling options, we generally want to sell options that are about one month away from expiration, a little shorter if you can. But like I said, 
what I tend to find in the Nordics is that commissions are a little higher than what um, we pay here in the United States. So you sometimes you might have to go out a little further, one, one and a half months to overcome your commissions. Now, whenever we're selling cover calls, remember cover calls are for stocks that you already own, which means that you want to sell them at a higher price. So when you, you, if, if, you have a, if you own a stock that's currently trading at 100 crowns, where do you want to sell that stock? You want to sell it at a higher price, 105, 110, 115. So whenever you're selling a cover call, you always remember that you want to select strike price that are above the current price of the stock. And the best way to think about a cover call is think about a placing a limit order to sell your stock at a profit at a higher price. So if you own a hundred crown stock, you want to take profits at 110 or 115, you place a limit order at that price. You generally want to sell a cover call at the same price that you would place a limit order to take profit on your stocks. And this generates an income stream in, in the stocks in your portfolio. And because the cover calls expire, so imagine placing a limit order that expires in one month. If that limit order does not hit, you can sell another cover call and generate another 180 crowns or 200 crowns or however much income that you're receiving. And that's how you generate an income stream on the stocks that you own in your portfolio because you're going to want to take profit on those stocks at some point. So by selling a cover call, you're setting yourself up to potentially take profits but if the stock doesn't rally and, and the call expires worthless, you can sell another call. And that is the income stream that you're actually generating off of the stocks that you own in your portfolio. I just want to make sure everyone is crystal clear on that. Please type five if that makes sense to you before I move on to the next strategy. So perfect. So again, if you own a stock at 100 crowns and you have a target price of 110 on this particular stock, what you would normally do as an equity investor is you place a limit order at 110 and you would wait, right? And you could wait for a few days, a few weeks, a few months, a few years, because you don't know when that stock is going to rally from 100 to 110. Instead, if you sell a 110 crown cover call, you can, it might take you a few months or even a few years, but as you wait for that stock to rally, every single month you're going to collect income. And that's the difference between an equity investor and an options investor. You're still investing in, in that same stock, but you're generating income stream for your own portfolio while you wait for that stock to rally. Because that's why you own the stock anyway, right? You own that stock because you think it's going to appreciate in value so that at some time in the future, you can sell it at a profit. This is allowing you to do that while generating income in your portfolio. So that is a cover call strategy. The second strategy is a cash secured put. This is for stocks that you want to own. So same thing when you're selling a cash secured put. Generally speaking, we want to sell shorter dated options. But again, in the Nordics, we tend to find that you usually have to go a month to a month and a half out. Um, and you want to sell uh, strike prices below the current price because think about a stock that you want to own. You never you never place a bid uh, at a higher price, right? You never pay more than what the current price is. You always try to pay less than what it's currently trading for. So whenever you're selling a cash secured put, you want to place it at a price below the current price. This compares to placing a limit order at a lower price to buy the stock and allows you to dollar cost average into the stocks that you want to own at a discount. Because you could do it even on a stock that you already own that you just want to buy more shares of. So if you already own 100 shares of H&M, but you want to buy another 100 shares, you can sell a cash secured put to buy that stock at a lower price. So again, trying to think about a stock, maybe, maybe there's XYZ stock that's trading at 100 crowns right now. You want to buy it at a lower price. As an equity investor, you might place a limit order at, let's say, 98 crowns, and you would simply wait. Right? That could take one day, one month, one year. You don't know how long it takes for that stock to decline. But a limit order doesn't pay you anything. When you sell a cash secured put at 98 crowns, not only do you have the, uh, the potential to buy the stock at 98 crowns, but you collect some income. And as you saw before in the example I showed you with H&M, that income amount is fairly large. We're, we were talking about 500 crowns uh, for every 100 shares over the next 72 days. That's double what you're getting paid on the dividend yield on H&M stock. So 
many times what we see, especially in the Nordics, uh, where options premiums tend to be a little larger, is that you can actually generate a significant amount of income on cash secured puts. So in my opinion, cash secured puts is one of the primary ways to generate income in the Nordics utilizing options because it's for any stock that you want to buy, you can sell a cash secured put instead of placing a limit order. And the income that you receive many times is double what you would receive from the dividend yield. So just want to make sure everyone understands this strategy before we move on. So please type six into the chat window uh, before we move on to the next strategy. Perfect. Lots of sixes. Great. So lastly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover credit spreads. So this for many of you, I will say is probably not applicable here for today because you're still learning about cover calls and cash secured puts. But for the few of you that are a bit more experienced, I do want to spend a little time in showing you credit spreads. Credit spreads are it's really more of a, a, a more of an advanced strategy. So we talked about selling a put option as a way to acquire the stock that you want to own. So the but for some people, maybe they don't want to own H&M stock, but they just simply think that H&M stock is going to go a little higher. So let's say we have an example of a stock that's trading at $100. Um, maybe you don't really want to own the stock. And, but you think that the stock is going to maybe move modestly higher, maybe to 102, 103. Um, and you want to be able to speculate on that move and generate some income. And that's really what a credit spread is suitable for. So in this particular case, a credit spread, what we're doing is we're still selling the one month option, right? Just like a cover call and cash secure put, any option strategy that we're selling, we generally want to sell shorter dated options. But what we're going to do here is we're going to sell an at the money uh, put and then buy an out of the money put against it. So for those of you that are a bit more advanced, you're probably familiar with deltas. For those of you that are brand new, I'm not even going to touch this at this point for you because I'm going to have a whole webinar talking about Greeks and what Delta means. But the goal here is that what you want to do is you want to sell a 100 strike put. So in this particular case, what I'm doing is I'm selling the 100 strike put, which gives me the obligation to buy the stock at 100 crowns. But because when you sell a 100 strike put, you have unlimited risk, meaning if I'm wrong, right, and the stock doesn't rally to 102, instead of moving from 102, let's say the stock declines to 70, when I sell the put, I'm taking on a huge amount of potential risk. So many times, uh, users who are just trying to speculate and they don't want to own the stock, they don't want to take on that type of risk. So what they do is they buy a lower put against that to basically cap the risk of selling that 100 crown put. So again, a more advanced strategy, not suitable for most of you here that are you know, just learning about cover calls and cash secured puts. But for those of you that want to learn more about this strategy, this is a high probability strategy for what I would consider neutral directional outlooks, meaning you think that it's going to move a small amount from 100 to 102. It's not for if you expect a big move. So if you think the stock is going to move from 100 to, let's say, 115, there are other strategies that are way better for that. But if you expect a small move, a 100, 102, especially if you feel that a stock is maybe near a support level, right? So maybe a stock has you know, reached a, a support level and you're, and you're pretty sure that the stock is not going to go below that support level, um, but you're not very bullish on it. You just think that it's maybe going to stick somewhere around the support level. Um, that's exactly when you might want to sell a credit spread. Uh, vice versa, if you have the exact opposite, if you have a stock that's maybe, whoops, if you have a stock that's maybe uh, reaching a resistance level and you're sure that the stock is, and you're pretty sure that the stock is not going to continue move, moving much higher and you think the stock is just going to maybe stay sideways, um, this is exactly when you might want to sell, again, a call credit spread. So you can either be bullish because you think the stock is going to defend these types of uh, supports, or you think it's more bearish because you think it's going to defend these types of ceilings then you can sell a credit spread. So depending on whether you're bullish or bearish, you would always sell the at the money put or call. So if the stock is trading around 100 crowns, you would either sell a 100 strike put if you're bullish or a 100 strike call if you're bearish. 
But because both of those strategies have unlimited risk, in order to help offset that, what you're going to do is you're going to buy an out of the money call or put against it to help cap that risk. So for those of you that have a bit more experience, the, I think the most important thing that I want you to walk away from all of this learning is that you want to sell relatively short dated options. So roughly about one month, one and a half months out, you always want to sell the at the money strikes. So the 50 Delta uh, strikes, and you always want to buy roughly about a 25 Delta call or put against it to control your risk. So if, if you are a more advanced trader and you want to learn more, those are the three most important points that I think you should remember from this particular webinar. So with that, what I want to do is just talk a little bit about um, the optimal strikes. So whenever we're selling cover calls, you want to sell cover calls that are more conservative, meaning giving your stock more upside to appreciate. So if we have a 100 strike, uh, if we have a stock that's currently trading at 100 crowns, uh, whenever we're selling a cover call, you wanna make sure that you give yourself a lot more room because you own the 100 crown stock because you believe it's going to rally. So give your stock some room to grow before you take profits on it. So on a 100 crown uh, one month um, call, cover call, maybe you select something like a 115 strike price, meaning give your stock that 15% room to run before the stock is called away. Uh, but when you're selling a cash secured put, you don't want to give yourself much room. Um, you want to sell something that's much closer to the current price, maybe, maybe 95 because whenever you're selling a cash secured put, you're doing it because you wanna own the stock. So whenever you're selecting your, your prices, you want to select something closer because something closer has a higher probability of triggering, which means that you have a higher probability of owning the stock. When you're selling a cover call, you wanna choose something further away because you actually want the stock to have, you don't actually want the stock to be called away very easily. You want it to, to actually, appreciate and value a fair amount before you take profit. So that's why whenever we're selling cover calls, you wanna give your stock more room to appreciate. When you're selling cash secured puts, what you actually want is a higher probability of exercise. So a closer, uh, a strike price that's closer to the current price when you're selling cash secured puts and a cover call, uh, a, a strike price that's further away from the current price. Now, I'm not gonna to get too much further in this because I think I've already dumped enough information on you today to think about these types of strategies and start wrapping your head around these concepts of how to generate income using the stocks that you want to own and the stocks that you um, are thinking about owning. Because again, we have, I have covered some of these topics before and we're gonna cover more on these topics going forward. And this is a learning process for everyone, especially for all of you that have answered that you've never traded these strategies. There are things that you still have to learn more about such as Delta and some of the Greeks and what do they mean because they're very useful in helping you select these two um, strike prices. So when I talk about 115 and 95, how do we get more concrete with actual stocks that you want to own? Um, so those are some of the things that you should look out for in the next coming weeks as we provide more education. But I always want to remind everyone that we actually have a whole education page that is already designed to show you um, more about these types of strategies. And I'm going to include this link into the chat window for those of you that want to learn more about these strategies. We do have some short videos on income strategies and speculation, but I did do a webinar um, on December 12th uh, called Enhancing Your Equity Portfolio with Options. And this is where I, do, I did dive quite a bit into cover calls and cash secured puts. So if you want to learn more, I highly recommend you to watch that recording. And keep in mind that if you want to learn more, I'm going to cover more of the topics that will help you better understand these strategies and better understand more concepts about options trading to help you implement these types of strategies. So lastly, what I want to walk, leave you with before we open this up for questions is really um, showing you the cover call and cash secured put report. This is something that we send to you every single Monday around 
uh, 12 p.m. Central European time, where we generate these reports to show you which stocks have the highest returns by, for selling cover calls and which stocks have the highest returns uh, based on current prices for selling cash secured puts. And not only do we tell you which stock, we also give you the expiration date and the strike price. So we're doing all of this work for you. And the reason that we send it out on Monday mornings is because your options expire on Friday. So once they expire, you ideally want to start selling cover calls and cash secured puts on Monday once, the mark, once your options have expired. So that's why we send this out every single Monday for you so that you can see what are the opportunities, how much yield am I actually receiving, and this helps, um, you know, helps you better understand where you can generate income. So if you're thinking about buying some stocks, you can take a look at this list and say, are there any stocks here on this list that I'm interested in buying? If there are stocks that you're interested in buying, perhaps you might want to sell a, a cash secured put on that stock to own that stock instead of just placing a limit order. And if you look at the cover calls, you might look at this list and say, are there any stocks that I already own in my portfolio? So let's say you own Ericsson B. Then you can say that, well, on Monday morning, Ericsson B was at 8250 um, I can sell the $90 call option in February and collect roughly $1.25 or so, which generates 1.5% yield in 44 days. If I annualize that out, that's 13% yield on a stock. Let's, look, let's pull up Ericsson B for one second. Ericsson B pays a 1.21% dividend yield. On this cover call, I'm generating 13% yield. So as you can see here, I'm, I'm almost, uh, you know, I'm trading 10 times the yield on this cover call than I am earning in, the, in, in this stock in dividends because I'm getting paid uh, here 1.25 crowns in just 44 days. Ericsson B pays one crown a whole, the whole year. So this is really where you can generate a significant amount or, or additional, a significant additional amount of income by selling cover calls on top of the dividend yield that you currently um, are receiving, which is the only yield that you're getting from your equity portfolio. So I hope that this was useful in helping you guys, number one, understand the power of options, showing you some real examples to hopefully help inspire you and put down the groundwork to help you understand how to start thinking about generating income in your portfolio because there are education that's already available out there for you on our education page. We're going to be doing more education coming up in the next few weeks to continue this type of education for you guys. So I really hope that you guys find this useful. So with that, I just want to thank everyone for taking the time out here this, this evening to learn more about these strategies. And at this point, what I'll do is I'll open this up for Q&A. If you have any questions, please type them into the chat window and I'll answer as many questions as I have time for here tonight. But again, I, I, I really thank all of you for coming, especially for those of you that you know, have never traded options before and are willing to spend the time to, to take the hour and learn more about it. And really, you know, we do this for you and I hope that you guys come away with this, uh, with some more knowledge and, and, and really an inspiration to start looking at options a little bit more for your portfolio. So again, if you have any questions, please type them into the chat window and I'll answer as many questions as I have time for here today. Uh, Jens is asking commission or provision for trading. Um, Jens, I'm not sure what your question is. If you don't mind clarifying that, I'm happy to answer that question. H, you're very welcome. Thank you so much. Uh, and just so everyone knows, the webinar that we just did is recorded, and I will send everyone both the recording and the, and the slides so that you can watch the recording at your own pace, and you can follow along using the slides. Oscar is asking, thanks for the info. Where can I find the spreadsheets? So Oscar, as long as you're signed up for Options Play, which you can do it at optionsplay.se, we will automatically email that to you every single Monday morning.
So optionsplay.se is where you sign up and we will start sending you every single Monday morning. Frederick, you're very welcome. Uh, Majid, you're very welcome as well. Jose, thank you so much. I, you're, you're very welcome. Um, Thomas, you're very welcome. Olivia is asking, um, one, one option is equivalent to 100 stocks. What if I sell a put and hit the strike price before the expiration date? Am I obligated to buy 100 stocks? Yes, that is correct. For every put option you sell, you are obligated to buy 100 shares of that stock. Um, Sigvard, you're very welcome. Olivia, you're very welcome. Any other questions before I sign off here for today? I know for those of you that are learning, this is a lot to learn at once. There were a lot of different concepts that were thrown out at you. There's a lot of different things that you need to think about like expiration dates and strike prices and how to think about that. Um, uh, someone's asking, why do you send it, the report on Mondays? So again, we send it out on Mondays because that's the first opportunity you have to sell options after they expire on Fridays. Um, because you can't enter an order before the expiration on Fridays, the first time you can enter that order is Monday. That's why we send it to you on Monday. We want you to get into the habit of selling options or generating income as soon as the previous um, strategy expires. So if you sell something in February, once that expires, the following Monday, you want to make sure you sell another cover call or another cash secure put. Once it expires, that's when you want to sell. And the first opportunity you have to sell after they expire is Monday morning. So that's why we send it to you Monday. Uh, Peter is asking, what is 50 delta or 25 delta? So delta refers to the probability of the, of the, of the strike price being in the money at expiration. So a uh, great question, but something, Peter, I will cover in the next few webinars because it is a more, it, it's, a, it's a topic that requires a little bit more time to explain. Um, but delta is basically helps us determine which strike price to sell. So you know, I talked to you about why you want to sell uh, relatively short dated options. Um, but uh, when you're, once you've selected an expiration date, you still have a lot of different strike prices to choose. So Delta helps us choose which strike price we actually want to choose. And it's using a probability based approach to selecting our strike prices. So that's all I think I really have time to explain for here today, Peter. Um, but it is something that we will cover in future webinars. Um, why do you sell before it expires? You, you don't sell it before you expire. You sell another one after it expires. So, at, so you're selling a new one after it expires. So after your, your option expires, you want to enter a new contract, right? And the Monday morning is the first opportunity for you to enter a new contract. That's why we send it on Monday mornings. you're not selling what you already own after it expires. You're selling a new contract after the previous one expires. I hope that answers your question. Um, with that, I just wanna thank everyone for taking the time out here this afternoon. Um, Stefan is saying, I'm not sure how the real purchase and sale is handled. Will you be able to show any of this in the future? So Stefan, that is where I think that contacting your broker is the best um, way to go about doing it simply because it, it does vary from broker to broker. So your broker should be able to at least walk you through placing an order. So if you say, hey, I want to sell a cover call in H&M, can you walk me through placing that order? They will be able to help you to do that. Now, um, this is something that I'm working with on NASDAQ with is, is getting the brokers to provide some content and um, videos on how to do that, because again, it does vary from broker to broker. I will have a webinar on the basics for entering an order of, of purchasing and selling um, your options. So that is something that we will uh, go over in the future, yes. Um, but I do want you to reach out to your broker because 
they will have some information that's more relevant to your specific trading platform. Olivia, you're very welcome. Looking forward to seeing you guys here at the next platform, uh, at the next webinar. So thank you so much. I hope you guys have a great evening and I'll see you guys in two weeks.